Hello and welcome to Outsiders Weather and the Skeptics Ice Age Watch, where we can see from this chart all climate change modeling temperature rise predictions going right back to 19, from 1975 to the present uh, times, which these are the increases in global temperatures predicted by over a hundred climate change models. You can see them going up and up there. With this black line through here, that's the average of all those models predicting global warming going back to 1975, as I said, a steady rise, as you can see. But then you look down here and you can actually see the satellite data from three separate satellite sets that show what actually occurred over that same period. These are the real temperature rises, not the models. And what do we see? Firstly, that with only a couple of rare spikes in warming, it's been pretty much below the predicted average, which is good all along, but even better, recently, the temperature rises have been even below the lowest predictions of all the climate change models and is in fact trending even lower than any of those predictions going forward. So how can global warming be occurring to a lesser degree and even in opposition to all the global warming models? As I always say, if the facts don't match the theory, it's the theory that must be wrong. Which may explain why in Britain, the Met Office says that the Brits are experiencing winter, a winter comeback this week, with Arctic winds, severe Arctic winds, blasting Britain to minus, a bitter minus eight degrees Celsius temperatures. On Easter Sunday, the highest temperature was a balmy, by British standards, 17.9 degrees, recorded in Pershaw, while only 63 miles away in Benson, it was a lower temperature of minus 5.2 degrees was recorded. And in the far north of the UK, they are suffering an Arctic blast with temperatures plummeting to a wind chill of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, in Braemar in Scotland, despite predictions made 20 years ago on those same models I showed you earlier, that children would never know what snow was because there wouldn't be any snow by 2020. The locals and their kids are excitedly sharing footage of a global warming event which coated the road in a mysterious white stuff called, uh, I don't think they know what it's called because they've never seen it before, snow. What a disaster. Speaking of which, here in Australia, rapidly escalating global warming poses an unprecedented national security threat, according to the former head of the UN Office of Disaster Risk Res Reduction, Robert Glaser, Glasser, who has called for the federal government to urgently recognise the security risks of climate-induced famines rising sea levels and mass migrations, which will affect hundreds of millions of people. Glasser claims that sea levels in, the, in Southeast Asia are rising four times faster than the global average, really, with water shortages, heat waves, collapsing fisheries and devastating storms, all imminent security risks. Uh, Glasser says in his report for the Australian... He's written all this in his report for the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Hmm, interesting. In fact, here's a picture of Mr Glasser's former boss at the United Nations, sponsor of the Great Reset, Antonio Guterres, posing for a photo for the cover of Time magazine with those terrifyingly four times rising sea levels threatening to submerge him altogether. Maybe he sent the pic to Dr Glasser four times faster than anywhere else. Remember, Mr Guterres and his fellow socialist cronies believe you will be happier if you own nothing. Perhaps they might make an exception for a pair of water wings. Meanwhile, Prince Philip, who has sadly died, wrote, as I mentioned earlier in the show, a, a letter a couple of years ago to climate realist, climate skeptic Ian Plymer, in which he described wind turbines as monstrosities and questioned whether they served any practical purpose at all. Great question, Phil. Here's a wind turbine graveyard, which will become the final resting place for thousands of unrecyclable, toxic fiberglass turbine blades. The blades, which have reached the end of their working lives, are cut into three separate pieces, then stacked and buried. 
and disposing of this is a massive problem. Each one of these costs taxpayers $200,000 or more to get rid of, $200 million in total, this is in the US, for just getting rid of 1,000 blades, to have them transported and decommissioned, all in order to tackle catastrophic climate change. Don't you just love the eco-lovies? Speaking of windmills, Holland is famous for three things. It's windmills, it's tulips, and I can't remember the other one. But uh, you won't see many tulips at the moment because although it's springtime in Holland, in the Netherlands, they are blanketed in snow. On April 7th, a severe global warming snap obliter obliterated any sign of gorgeous spring weather right across Western Europe. Here's what it looked like from a window in the town of Valkenburg. I don't know that I booked a mini holiday in South Limburg, joked one freezing Dutchman. I don't get it either, but, you know, Dutch humour never was... Well, a good friend of mine is Dutch, so I'll tiptoe around that particular issue. Anyway, Dutch media reported almost 10 centimetres of snow, 20 centimetres of snow in Valsberg, which at 322.4 metres is the highest point in mainland Netherlands. Now, if only there were a quirky comedy song at the expense of the Dutch, you know, with windows and tulips and tiptoeing around it, I'd be so happy. Uh, whatever he did to this song. Oh, sit out through the window, by the window, that is where I'll be. Come sit out through the tulip with me. Oh, sit out from the garden, by the garden, I'm 